Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Beckwith, and it's funny because just after I posted the video yesterday on the Earth Energy Imbalance, I came across a uh, a short and sweet paper by many, many uh, climate scientists. You know, many, many authors, like almost sixty authors, and the title is "Earth's Energy Imbalance More Than Doubled in Recent Decades." And of course, uh, you know, who's been saying this for a long, long time? Well, the one and only James Hansen. And is there even a reference to James Hansen in this paper? You know, did they talk about his work? Um, you know, I look at the author list and they do mention the Global Warming in the Pipeline 2023 paper. And that's about it. So at least I'll give them credit for at least mentioning Hansen's work because he's clearly the leader in this and he's been talking about it, you know, specifically sulfur in um, marine uh, shipping fuels, etc. for for quite a while. Um, so how many authors are there actually? You know, you could read here and say 29 authors. Well, it looks like more than 29 names. What th th these numbers refer to places. Okay, so there's 29 different research institutions around the world that authors on this paper are from, 29 different ones, some of them repeat. So I think, I think they're unique numbers till they get to about 22, so 23, so 24, there's 24 different institutions, and then this one repeats. So this would be uh, you know, plus one over, over, the, so that, that'd be 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So add one to this, that's the number of authors. Add two to it. <laughs> add uh, three to it. Add four to it. Add uh, five to it. See what I'm doing. Add six to it. At least, at least six. So you need to at least add six to the 45 number. Actually, 46 number. So anyway, it's about 55. I think I counted 57 authors. If you just count them one at a time. Anyway, it's a lot of authors. It's a lot of climate scientists. And uh, what it, you could, there's actually a PDF of the peer review history for this article. With so many authors, um, you know, they would have, probably like who's doing the writing i mean i think people are just putting their name on because they agree with what the paper is saying they don't necessarily have to how do you need how do you need 50 60 authors for a four page paper right it's clearly like i don't know this this is why people get a bit cynical about science you know why are there so many authors you could ask this guy what did you do on this paper uh well i read the paper and i said yeah that sounds good like, is that how easy it is to get your name on a scientific publication today? I'm being a bit harsh, but I'm, re I'm, I'm kind of annoyed because Hansen's a leader. He's done all of this work and he doesn't really get the, the credit for it. You know, the young climate scientists, I think. Yeah, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't know. And it, it, he talked about that in some of his recent letters. Anyway, what does the paper say? The Earth's energy... <laughs> I've given my little rant about the ridiculousness. It's funny. If it was... Good job it's not two pages because you'd have like 200 authors on it, right? <laughs> you, you get my point? Anyway, I'm ranting and raving about it. Let's see what it actually says. It confirms what I was talking about in my last video about Earth's energy imbalance. Um, the key point is that the EEI has more than doubled in recent decades. The large trend has taken, the large trend has taken us by surprise. All these people have been taken by surprise. And as a community, they should strive to understand the underlying causes. I have a suggestion as a community, read all of James Hansen's papers and understand them and, uh, you know, do your work based on that and build on that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So why are you taken by surprise? You're taken, it should say this large trend has taken us by surprise because we haven't read and understood what James Hansen has been saying for the last two years. <laughs> okay. 
Our capability to observe the Earth's energy imbalance and budget terms is threatened as satellites are decommissioned. So this is a concern, right? You know, we have on we have uh, sensors up on satellites up in space, and as these sensors go offline, we have to make sure we have a continuation of the work. You know, with updated sensors, otherwise we're going to lose. We won't be able to keep up data sets and we'll know less and less about what's happening. That That's a very bad situation. It's like flying blind, if you like. So global warming results from anthropogenic human-caused greenhouse gas emissions. They upset the delicate balance between the uh, incoming sunlight, the reflected sunlight, and the emitted radiation from Earth. So when they say emitted radiation, they're talking about the, the sunlight, wa all wavelengths, but basically including the short wavelengths. Some of it is reflected, 30% is reflected, or more like 28 and a half now, because the albedo is decreased of the Earth. The emitted radiation, the Earth heats up, and then it emits radiation. This is long-wave radiation or infrared radiation. And uh, basically, what's com if you take what's coming in and that exceeds what's going out, the Earth will warm, Right? So this is a, the imbalance leads to energy accumulation in the on, in the Earth system that includes the atmosphere, the oceans, the land. It melts the ice in the cryosphere. We get higher temperatures, rising sea levels, and more extreme weather around the globe. There's a lot more water vapor. Um, there's a lot more evaporation. The hydrological cycle is disrupted. Despite the fundamental role of the Earth. Energy imbalance, or EEI, Earth Energy Imbalance, in regulating the climate system, as known to humanity for more than 200 years, our capacity to observe it is rapidly deteriorating as satellites are being decommissioned. Okay, and then the plain language summary actually has additional information. So, you know, they add different things. So you should read it. You shouldn't just ignore it because... They talk about the imbalance between incoming radiation from the sun reflected in outgoing infrared infrared radiation. See, now they say infrared radiation. And is, is this easier to understand than emitted radiation? So plain language? I mean, it looks like they're adding more stuff here. <laughs> the imbalance leads to energy accumulation in the Earth systems. This is identical to above. Uh, according to the UN IPCC, this is additional information too. It's rising faster than expected. The imbalance in 2023, it reached values twice as high as the best estimate from IPCC. See, this, that's not a plain language summary. That's, that's more information. This should all be in the abstract. Anyway, it's very poor, a very poor paper. You know, good job there weren't more authors because it would be even worse, right? Um, anyway... And then they say the exact same thing right here. Global warming results from anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions, right? It, it's just a, like they, they actually just cut and paste this line here. Like, like it's, it's horrible, right? It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, I'm being so critical of this paper. This imbalance leads to energy accumulated. You know, this is all being said already. And then they put a couple of references. Well, that's in the plain language thing. So they, you know, they just keep saying the same thing over and over again. There's a two century mention and so on. Okay, so here, let's get something new. They're saying, worryingly, the observed energy imbalance is rising much faster than expected. They said it reached 1.8 watts per square meter in 2023, right? Peaked. And I, I, I gave that number in the last video. It says, or twice that predicted by climate models, it was actually 0 0.6 between 2001 and 2014, if you recall. So it's three times larger than that. You know, they say twice that predicted by climate models. Well, it's three times more than it was, you know, uh, than the decadal average from 2001 and to 2014, more than the decadal average, the 14 year average. So they can't, basically the climate models are failing here. Okay, uh, they can't reproduce the rate of change. They can barely reproduce it up to 2020 and then it's it's just taken off since 2020. So they, you know, there's more information on the perplexity.ai uh, site, which I, you know, which I showed in the last video. Again, watch the last video. It's 
and then what and then what you know when you finish this one rewatch the last one or, or watch it if you haven't okay uh so they say you know the energy imbalance is a result of multiple factors forcing feedbacks internal variability uh, the forcing greenhouse anthropogenic emissions leading to the accumulation of CO2 and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So the, they capture the infrared radiation in the atmosphere. So the atmosphere heats, the amount of emitted infrared radiation to space is reduced. So the imbalance increases. Part of it is offset by anthropogenic aerosols, which cool the climate. They reflect some sunlight back to space. That's a direct effect. But they also, more aerosols, more clouds. More clouds, whiter earth, more reflection. Okay, that's the indirect effect, which is huge. The cooling effect is weakening as governments address air quality issues, right? Cleaning up the air. Think of the air over China, the air over um, India, um, right now, the air over Ottawa and many other cities in Canada is really, really bad. Uh, could you know? I should do a separate video on the Canadian wildfires and how it's the air is really, really bad here. Very poor air quality. Um, so there's uh, you know feedbacks from clouds, water vapor, the cryosphere. They all act to amplify global warming. And so we need to know the details of this. With an observed global warming of about 0.6 K, so 0.6 Celsius too, over the 2001 to 2024 period. So there's more, you know, the, the, the rise of temperatures accelerating. We beat all records on earth energy imbalance in 2023. 2024 was also bad, right? Um, and, uh, they talk about some of the reasons why, but the models just don't explain it. I mean, they mentioned ENSO and a few other things. Anyway, this is the number here. This is the trend, is the blue line. Um, this is the Earth energy imbalance. And uh, you can see how quickly it's rising up. And you can see, you know, we reached 1.8 here. It's dropped down a little bit, but it's been, you know, the trend is going up and up and up. I mean, it's just... It's it's taken off like crazy since 2000, and the models just can't figure that out. And climate scientists ignored it until 2025, and they, you know, 60 of them get together and write a paper, say, Houston, we have a problem. But more, they're they're talking more about how we measure it, and saying that. Uh, so, how do we measure it? The components of the Earth's energy imbalance are currently observed, measured using a combination of NASA's series on board several pole on board several polar orbiting satellites so there's some orbit some satellites that that um, go through the poles right their orbit is not equatorial or zonal it's more meridional it, it orbits the poles goes from one pole to the other um, so they've got so the series instruments on those they've got a total solar irradiance tsis on the international space station by the way there's guys up there and if musk doesn't want to send rockets there then they'll stay up at the space station for a while longer maybe they'll have to ask the russians to send up a soyuz capsule you know uh, to to get them <laughs> I, I i don't I, I better not talk about what's happened today if you're watching this video you know uh and you you know what i'm talking about with uh with uh, Elon and uh, the other guy um, having a bit of a spat. Um, there's also observations on ocean temperatures and ocean heat, right? 89, 90% of the heating of the earth goes into the ocean. So there's these thousands of autonomous Argo floats that, that change, go up through the water column, doing all kinds of measurements, float around the planet. You know, very important for getting data on the oceans. Um, that, but however, um, right, so it says here, the resulting radiation budget record, to get a long-term record, you take the overlap of, from different instruments in orbit to ensure no discontinuity. So a continuous data set. You don't want to lose critical data, have gaps. If there's a gap, then our ability to track and understand the changes in the Earth energy imbalance is compromised. So there's presently four sets of these series instruments in space. 
There's a follow-on mission, Li Liberia. Um, but that's planned to be launched in 2027. Within a decade, Libera will be the only instrument in space. The other satellites are, will all be decommissioned. So these series ones will be decommissioned. This will be the only thing up there. So it's a single point of failure. You don't want that. There's no formal plans at the moment to continue this vital record after the Libera's mission end. For solar irradiance, the follow-on total solar irradiance instrument, TSIS-2, is scheduled to launch this year, but it only it's only expected to last for three years. Okay, so, so this is going to be a problem. There is an initiative based on, it says, spherical black satellites with accelerometers that will measure the radiation pressure, a European mission to use a constellation of satellites with wide field of view radiometers to measure energy, cameras uh, for spatial information, but they're not, they don't have funding. They're proposed missions. They don't have funding. They probably wouldn't fly to the 2030s. So we're going to be, we're going to be lacking the ability to measure these crucial things like the earth energy imbalance, um, you know, uh, in about five, five to 10 years. Okay. Um, and this is going to be a problem. So they're, they're, they're saying the community must work to understand and quantify the causes of the changes in the earth imbalance, not only far into the future, but on a year to year basis. And the anomaly has clearly caught us all off guard. Well, they should all go to James Hansen and follow his work, whatever he puts out, and they won't be caught off guard. That's my comment again. Um, and that's it. That's, that's it in the paper. I missed something. Here's a curve. This is climate model. This is global mean temperature, global surface air temperature in Kelvin in blue. And uh, here we are in 20, this is 2030. This is 2025, right? We're 1.5, 1.6. We're probably, we're, we're, we're way up here on this curve. You know, they give the curve and the error bars. You know, they show it, good luck with this. They show it flattening out. This is using a low emissions um you know, fantasy model. And then this is Earth's energy imbalance in watts per square meter. You know, we were at about 0. 0.6 and uh, they they show it only, this is 20 around now and they show it about one. Well, wait a minute, uh, it's 1.8, <laughs> right? Isn't it 1.8 way up here? So I, I don't, re I really don't know what they're playing at, you know, showing this this type of graph. Anyway, I'm I'm extremely critical of this paper because it has a huge number of authors who should know better to to write such nonsense about being taken by surprise, etc. All they need to do is watch James Hansen's videos, listen to what read his reports, and uh, you know stop this nonsense type of reporting that they're taken by surprise. Oh, it's a big surprise. Nobody knew this. I mean, it's, it's, it's bollocks. It's utter nonsense. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening. Um, and, uh, please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos. And of course you want to get this t-shirt, all hell is breaking loose, climate mayhem or, or, uh, you know, whether, whether there's one, Weather wilding, weirding, and whiplashing. There you go. I mean, th these are these are awesome logos, and uh, yeah, you want to uh, load up on t-shirts for the summer. It's going to be a very very warm summer. So thanks for listening, and uh, bye for now.